everybody. Now I'm going to talk about a reason why I do not, do not like small form factor PCs nowadays, especially slim ones from Dell. I got this computer at the Google Computer Store along with this Weiss Wind Term. I paid $20 for both this stuff. And this computer is funny, it is. This computer is listed for $14.99, but I got $5 off, and the cashier made a mistake of punching in $9.99 rather than $14.99. I just kept my mouth shut to cover the cashier's butt and get my $5 discount. Anyways, here is the Dell Dimension. No, actually, it's an Optiplex 745. Okay, it's Optiplex 745. It has an Intel Pentium D processor. Originally had one of XP Professional. And it was Dean Vista Cable. That's a slim DVD ROM drive, which in, in fact, this is actually a notebook hard, um, a notebook DVD drive, excuse me. And this appears to be a notebook floppy drive, too. There's some dust collecting up in here because the system intakes air from here. And I'll explain why I do not like Dell's modern design of cooling the system. It's not very good. Anyways, let's go and have a look inside the computer. Okay, I got the cover off, and let's go ahead and have a look at the back real quick. We have our 275 watt power supply, and we have our main board connections right here. We have a VGA out, a serial parallel, six USB 2 ports, an Ethernet port, might be a gigabit, might be 10 100, not sure. And we have a line out and a combination of either line in or microphone. And I believe this is a micro BTX chassis design, which, I mean, I don't really care much for BTX, which I'll explain why here shortly. Let's have a look inside here. Oh, we see some bad capacitors. Normally you would think this is a capacitor plug or this system got hit by lightning or something. But actually, what caused these nice Rubicon capacitors to bulge and leak? is due to the simple matter of getting too hot. See, Dell and Gateway and some others nowadays who are, are starting to use BTX in some of their form factors are not doing a very good job of cooling the system. I mean, a full-size BTX tower is not that bad because, I mean, you have much, much more room inside the tower for everything to ventilate. But when you cram everything to such a small chassis, Things can get hot very, very easily. Which, of course, like I said earlier, this system intakes air through here, blows it through here, this heat sink, off the hot running Pentium D processor. I mean, these do run pretty hot. So that hot air comes off the CPU core across this motherboard, and these capacitors are right in the flow. Notice how we have four failed Rubicons from overheated, from being overheated. And we have a Chemicon back here that's also bulging on top from being overheated. Well, these Chemicons, some of them do have a flawed design causing them to bulge and fail. But, I mean, this isn't a very good desi design overall. The Sanyos were okay, surprisingly. But, I mean, when you get so much heat to cause Japanese capacitors to fail, you know something's wrong. I mean, this thing is so tiny. I mean, it can't even accept regular sized expansion cards. You've got to have the small form factor expansion cards. I'd really hate to see somebody put a graphics card in this thing. That just make the system run that much hotter. Because, huh? I mean, you have air coming in through here. And you have the power supply fan doing the rest of the work. There's no other fans in this thing. And at least Gateway, on the Gateway I worked on not too long ago, their BTX tower had... An exhaust fan on the back. I never seen that on Dells. That's not a very good design. I mean, even that Dimension 3100 sitting in the closet, it just has the CPU fan blowing air across the heatsink into the system. 
but there's no exhaust fan. Only thing else you have is a power supply fan. But like I was saying, when you got systems in this big of a form factor, things don't get that hot. I mean, wasn't wasn't that big of a deal? I mean, this machine still works just fine. But with this particular machine, the excess heat caused the capacitors to fail. And like I say, you would think maybe this would be due to a lightning strike, but actually, Google Computer Works had like 20 or so of these things, and it was kind of a 50 50 ratio of working ones to non working ones. Some of them had Pentium 4 HT chips, and some of them had Pentium D's. I got this one just particular for the Pentium D processor and extra parts like the SATA cables, that sort of stuff. And these do have very, very, very powerful 80 millimeter fans in them. Sand Ace fans. Good old fans that put out a lot of air. But just keep this in mind if you're planning on buying a newer Dell, Octoplex, Mini Tower, or just whatever, maybe Inspiron, whatever's used in this kind of form factor. Make sure it has adequate cooling. Make sure there's some sort of cooling. Just, I mean, better cooling design than what this is. Because, I mean, I do not like this at all. I mean, you only have the CPU intake that blows a, that blows across the CPU core, bringing in hot air into the system. And the only thing else is the power supply to exhaust it. And all the good design in my books. And, of course, it's funny now that I'm saying that, a guy commented on my netbook video talking about his Dell Mini netbook only having passive cooling. It was just a cooling plate, no fan at all. It's funny how I had mentioned about the Aspire 1, Acer Aspire 1 A150 not having much of a cooling system, only had just a plate and a fan. That's actually a much better design than what Dell was having in their netbooks. Just a cooling plate and no fan at all, no heat pipes, no nothing. And gee, I wonder why that netbook stopped working a few years later. The guy said that he was having memory errors and stuff and of course those kinds of systems the memory controller is integrated into, into the chipset not like nowadays with the core i7s and i5s and i3s and of course AMDs. The older design systems have the memory con controller and an OR bridge. So when stuff doesn't get adequate cooled you either have bad capacitors or you just kill your chipset or your CPU altogether. And of course, that's one bad design in Dell's, in my book of Dell's crappy designs, and this would be another bad design in my book of Dell's crappy designs. And of course, it is like a dictionary. There's so many bad designs I've seen from Dell in the past. It's so, I mean, it's terrible. Anyways, what do you guys think? Let me know.